Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Flower Power Live. Today is June 21st, and it is the day right after the summer solstice. So today we have a special show coming back to our wheel of the year and the card that I drew back in December for summer solstice. So welcome to Flower Power. Uh, my name is Allison. I'm an herbalist, educator, and ecologist, and I love doing the show and sharing all the plant goody info stuff that I love with you. Thanks for being here. So I was going to sing, it's the most wonderful time of the year, but I'll spare you. I just love summer more than any other time of year. I love warm weather. I love being able to be outside. I love the sort of sensual feelings that we get with the wind and warmth on our skin. And um, I just can't think of a better time of year than to be sitting on a hot deck with a cool beverage and enjoying all the lovely greenness all around us. Now, we're coming to the end of Mercury retrograde. Yay! And we're also uh, finishing the summer solstice, which of course is celebrated um, all around the world with all different kinds of rituals. A lot of them involving sort of fire and the appreciation and celebration of the sun and all that it provides for us in this super abundant season that we're entering into. And when I went back to the cards, I realized that I had drawn the card for white sage. Now, this is not a plant that grows where I live. And so it's probably something I wouldn't have chose if I hadn't brought the card for it. So white sage is going to be our plant of the week. And what it is telling us is that it's time to sort of re-examine what you believe in and make sure that it's actually true for you. So first we'll get into a little bit about the plant and then we'll talk a little bit about what that means for you. So white sage is salvia apiana and it's in the mint family like so many of these other um, aromatic herbs that we use all the time. And even though it's not really used as the, it's not the same as the culinary sage that we usually think of, it um, is closely related and it grows in pretty dry regions. And this white sage is, has a very small range. It really mostly just grows in California and like Baja, Mexico area. And this is what's called a Mediterranean style climate, which means it has sort of a wetter in the winter and very dry, droughty summers and pretty moderate temperatures all year round. So Mediterranean style, obviously that means also in the Mediterranean, Greece or um, Italy and places like that have a similar type of climate. And it's zones eight through 11. So if you live in that one of those zones, that might be a plant that you're familiar with. Now, this particular plant is not really, it's a wild plant. And so it, it's not really that easy to grow in a garden. You can, um, it, it has, like I said, it has to have the super droughty period. It is a beautiful plant though. Where's my picture? Doesn't grow around here, so I had to print out a picture. It's got this really lovely, really whitish green um, foliage to it. And you can see the full plant down below. It gets these, it's maybe like two to three feet and then another two to three feet on these very tall flower stems. And they have, the culinary sage has sort of, not a huge, but a, a noticeable, nice purplish, pinkish flower. Um, and the white sage has a very small kind of indescript, smaller flower up on the flower stems that we might think is somewhat insignificant, but the bees do not think it's insignificant. They love it. And it's actually even named after a bee, Salvia apiana. And the um, honeybee name is Apis mellifera. So um, if you're unfortunate enough to live in that type of climate, you might consider trying to find a plant at a nursery, get it established, and then you probably have a fair number of bees and other pollinators that really like this plant. Now, the traditional uses of this plant, um, native people in the area used this as an herb and also as food. So the seeds would be collected and made into a sort of a gruel. And then the, um, even the foliage, like the foliar tips off of the plant could be eaten as well. 
it was also used medicinally for fevers. You could either eat it or, you know, they would uh, use it in a, a um, like a smokehouse sort of a, not a smokehouse, but a, um, like a sauna house. And you can also drink an infusion of it for a cough, which is similar to what we use the other uh, regular sort of culinary sage for. But its primary use and still is used for this today is for purification. Now, white sage is considered a sacred plant with, um, and it's mostly used for ceremonial purposes within indigenous peoples. And its primary mode of use is smudging. You've probably heard of smudge sticks and sage for smudging and so on. And that means I don't have a white sage um, stick, but I do have, and oh, this is actually sweet fern. This is basically you would take a plant when it was still fresh and you would bundle it up and just tie it around with some kind of string or maybe some other kind of plant fiber that you might have. And then you light the tip of it and you don't let the flame burn, you let the smoke burn off of it. And that is the way that this has traditionally been used with white sage. You also could just take a few leaves and kind of put them in a little pile inside of a container and just burn them that way, like an incense sort of a thing. But, um, and one of the things I thought was cool, I am not a Native American, but uh, as I was reading about this, it's considered one of the four medicines of Native people, which includes sage, tobacco, sweet grass, and cedar. So all four of those are used in ceremonial ways in a lot of Native American um, traditions. Now, these are really embedded in the culture and they're used in sacred ways and usually involve like, prayers and rituals and different kinds of ceremonies and so on. But unfortunately, this act of smudging, you know, so this kind of like casual social phenomenon, somebody called it, um, has led to its placement on the United Plant Savers Endangered Species List. It's definitely threatened in the areas where it grows. And uh, unfortunately, what's happened is, oh, this is great. Let's use this for cleansing our negative vibes, man, which is absolutely not what this plant was kind of put here for people to do. And so um, people have used it without really this concept of its sacred use. And this has led to, of course, greedy people over harvesting it, selling it to companies and commercially producing smudge sticks and um, causing it to be threatened. So it's a really important species in this um, what's it called coastal sage scrub ecosystem. I lived in Santa Barbara for a short period of time, and that's the kind of ecosystem that's right there on the on the coast and uh, chaparral type of system. And it's it's ecologically fragile, mostly due to human impact, um, starting from way back when. Um, Settlers came in, they were grazing cattle there that are trampling all over the white sage and um, just kind of a long history of abuse uh, for the poor plant. So this comes back to, as you may have seen my show on golden seal or a couple other plants that I talked about, about responsible wild crafting. So what's happening is people are just going in and just chopping the stuff down because they're making money off of it. And unfortunately, people do this. And I want to remind you again, wild crafted does not always mean sustainably harvested, okay? Sometimes it's almost better to buy something that's not wild crafted, that's grown, responsibly grown, um, because of these fragile ecosystems that people are harvesting in. And um, Anyway, so just a return to reminding you that there is a wild crafters code of ethics about how much you should harvest and whether you should harvest and how you should always just be checking to see if a plant can be harvested here in the Northeast. The um, ramps, wild ramps, which is a type of wild onion became very popular on um, like upscale restaurant menus um, maybe about a decade ago and people started going out and just like digging the stuff up and it's like, whoa, this is not designed to be harvested in this way. So you really have to have uh, an awareness about what you're harvesting. Now, as I said, the Native American use is mostly for purification and cleansing. And this is also true for the flower essence from white sage. So this essence helps you to move on through difficult times. It cleanses body and soul and creates a pathway to the divine 
It brings about a sense of common peace. It's like wide, wise old sage. And that is from the Center for Nature Connection website. And uh, from uh, Daughters of Isis was says that the essential quality of the white sage medicine is really, it's an ally that kind of clears this block we have between our outer and inner self. So it helps us to become aware of like how we act and what we say, kind of the superficial us and um, opens us up to say, well, wait, wait, what is truly going on with me in my deeper self? It makes you take notice and you and confront these types of blockages so that you can actually uh, transform and transmute yourself into more of the sort of true person that you're meant to do, be. Self honesty being the key word for this particular flower essence. Taking a look at your so-called mistakes that you or excuses for not being your true self, and and helps you to get right back to um, who you're supposed to be, what your path is supposed to be. So the oracle card itself uh, is a um, shows a picture of the white sage plant that's growing in a pot, which basically shows someone's cultivating this instead of going out to try to um, wild harvest it. And um, it's well taken care of. It has a basket with freshly harvested sage buds in it. And they're being made into a smudge stick. They're being bundled together and the little pieces are being saved on the side. So it's being con you know, consciously collected and gathered here. And the message from the card is that um, you know, now is the time that we are maybe a bit in a spiritual crisis and in a way that is challenging what we have always believed. So it is time to kind of rise to this challenge and set aside these long held beliefs that they may not actually be true for you. So many times we take on beliefs or, um, things that we do in our life that if we really examined them, we'd realize uh, this isn't really for me. This is something I just kind of brought in because it sounded like a good idea at the time. And so what's going on right now at this solstice time where we're really open, really open to the world and open to all the energies of the earth. And, you know, we got less clothes on. This is a far cry from my winter sweaters and scarves I was wearing, you know, a few months ago. And so the question is to really look, what is sacred and what is important to you? And whatever that is, it needs to be protected, just like the sage needs to be protected as well. So this white sage is a very powerful spiritual ally, but its sacredness has been disrespected in so many ways. And one of the things I read is how, you know, there's accusations that, that non-native people have culturally appropriated um, sage for their use. And I don't know that much about cultural appropriation, except to say that whatever is happening right now with current commercialization and um, the way that it's being used is neither appropriate or respectful. So it's just actually when we use plants in this way, plants were put here, I believe, for a purpose to help us. And when we take advantage and abuse their um, presence here, it is completely disrespectful. Now, if we choose to incorporate traditions from other cultures, you know, I'm white and I grew up in the United States, but I love yoga. Is that wrong? Is that, you know, like, how do I use these traditions that, that ring true to me, even though they're not from my sort of native culture? How do we go about doing that and use it in a purposeful, purposeful and meaningful and respectful uh, way in, in the way that we use these things? And it goes the same for herbs. So it's a good time to ask, what are your important beliefs and and how are you holding this kind of sacred space for yourself and i don't mean to i mean this is really not a lighthearted question if we think about the way i mean literally people are using these sage smudge sticks so 
oh, my boyfriend broke up with me. I got to get rid of my bad vibes. I mean, this is not what we're talking about, people. This is serious business. My belief is that we are put here to be the best true person, be true to ourselves, to our, we have a purpose for being here. And now is the time to examine this. What are you doing on your spiritual journey? <laughs> you need to check this out. And um, as the saying goes, get rid of that, which does not serve you. And maybe it's a bit overused, but it's very, very true. We hold on to a lot of the things that we should have gotten rid of. We should have learned and let go a long time ago. Now, white sage smudge sticks, I mean, I will never buy white sage again. I really don't use it that much anyway, but there are, and there are plenty of other much more abundant plants that can be used for smudging purposes. But, and I'm not suggest you, you know, that you do that, but you can kind of, Let's look at the message. A lot of times you can just kind of smudge and clear just by, again, looking at the message from a particular plant without even have to necessarily have the plant itself. So you can kind of tap into this energy and ask for some guidance on clearing my beliefs. What do I really believe in? What does it mean to me? What are my, what's my sort of rituals and what do I have faith in and so on? But make sure that it's something that actually means something to you that intuitively feels right. You know, we're coming back into this supposed new normal. And a lot of people spent the last year or 16 months really examining what was important to them. And so make sure that as we come back in reopening after a pandemic, that you are holding on to those things that are important. You're not just falling back into some routines of things that were never really that great for you in the first place. and Make sure you this deep soul searching that you've done stays with you and make it a permanent part of your new life. So take that time to just kind of question, do I, what do I believe in? What's important to me? And should I continue following these if I know deep inside that it just doesn't feel right? So that's our message from White Sage today. A little bit heavy here for the uh, lighthearted summer solstice. But it's really important to do these things on a regular basis. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, like I said last week, I'm working on my next challenge coming up, my Come Back to Your Senses Challenge. It's going to be starting on July 12th. And I look forward to that. It's going to be super fun. If you're not a part of my Flower Power Facebook group, that's where the challenge is going to be held. So feel free to join up. And we'll put the link down below. And I hope to see you there. Until then, have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.